Criticade! Hey, welcome to the Criticade Criticast for you Criticucks out there. No, okay, wait. <laughs> I, I had an idea about this. Yeah. Because we, I hate that name. Yes. And I don't think the fans like being called cucks either. <laughs> it's funny. The, all two of them. So, you know, I, <laughs> I think that they should be called Critikin. That's way like, worse. Why is that worse? That's stupid. No, it's not. It, it's like a combination of Munchkin and uh, Critic. Yeah. Hold because, on. Because I've Munchkins s- are like Munchkins are what you'd call like little shitty kids who run around arcades and shit. Yeah, I have some some thoughts about that that I will mention to you off camera. Okay. But I'm gonna tentatively say let's not do that instead. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you'll, you'll you'll I'll explain why. Okay. Yeah. I also. Uh, I also was wondering, what do we call us? Because, like, the grumps are called the grumps. The, gri- the critics. The critics? The critics. I, that sounds like Hello! so... Hello! I'm no, a yeah. nostalgia critic! It sounds like that, and it also sounds like, oh, we're the critics. So are we, we critique games for a living. Oh. Like, we're so fancy and, and educated, and we're not. So... <laughs> I am currently writing a Facebook thesis on the Emoji Movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I, w- I will post on, on, on our Twitter when that's done. Sure. Because <laughs> it, is, it is several paragraphs long, and mm-hmm. I highly dissect it. Yeah. So I'd say that, that we, are, we, we are critical we're, to the we're, point where... We're critical people, but like calling ourselves critics... Yeah, it's well, just that's the thing. <laughs> if we ever do collab with the Nostalgia Critic, yeah. that's our in. <laughs> I guess. Like, hey, Doug, we're, we're critics. critics too. You're a critic. Yeah. Put us on the next episode. Actually, if if the Nostalgia Critic is looking for new actors and you listen to this video, <laughs> Doug? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'd love to act on Nostalgia I know Critic. You it's would. so funny. Yeah. It'd be fun. <laughs> I've mentioned I'm not a huge fan. No, I know. I I, I mean, I like him. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't a, dislike him. I just don't like him. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of his live action stuff but if i was in it boy boy howdy would i chill it <laughs> well yeah i'd love every show if i was in more. <laughs> that's fair yeah so this gets back to doug walker please <laughs> text me at five 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 yeah uh uh, so so, how was your last week of uh, doing shit? I was really busy, but not yeah. in like a like a worky way. In like a, uh, my girlfriend left for college, and I've mm. kind of shoved everyone off because I've been hanging out with my girlfriend be- before she leaves for college. Yeah, that makes sense. And then this week, I just hung out with all my friends because it's they're all leaving for college this next yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like shit. Yeah. So I hung out with some people. Uh, I had a good time. I saw nice. the Emoji Movie for a second time. Oh, God. And, and here's the reason why. It was not out of choice. Yeah. The guy I was hanging out with, he said, all right, I'm going to buy us movie tickets. I got some money burning in, a, in, our, <laughs> in my pocket. And he's like, we're going to go see The Dark Tower. Okay. And then, um, and then that day, he's like, hey, time's got messed up, so I got us tickets to the <laughs> Emoji Movie. So it's like, I so can't say can't no. Say it. Yeah. Because he bought them already. Right. So I just sucked it up, and I saw the Emoji Movie a second time. Mm. And we were walking in, and Wonder Woman was starting around the same time in a theater right across oh, the bend. Oh, that's and I was painful. Like, and I was like, let's just see, let's just see Wonder Woman. <laughs> let's walk into Wonder Woman and see. I bet the theater's empty. And the guy's yeah. like, no, he bought tickets to the Emoji Movie. And I'm like, well, the morals here, they don't stack <laughs> up, all right? Just, just suck it up. Yeah, I guess. See a, a, a it's, decent film. It's instead. one thing if like you watch a movie and then you go into like another film and then like you watch two movies for the price of one ticket. Yeah. It's another thing entirely if you watch a movie that's going to be out of theater soon because you don't want to watch the movie you paid for. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it's not like we would have bothered anyone. Yeah. I mean probably, you don't know, but <laughs> Yeah, fair. Fair. Yeah. Uh and then what else have I done? What else have I done? Uh you you go while I think of more things that oh, I've done. Oh, okay. Uh I I I worked. I, I did. I, I work a lot, so I, I did a lot of that stuff. Um, I, I took kind of a break from editing for a while. I noticed that actually. Because it's like, yeah, yeah, you have access to my. Yeah, files. I mean, we're well, <laughs> we're well up to date on editing. Kind of. I mean, I, I have a lot to do coming mm-hmm. up. I and like I have the best of coming up and everything. But oh, uh, yeah. I basically I played video games. I did. I tried. I started a a Pokemon because we did the random thing, yeah. the random Pokemon thing. Uh, I did a totally random one. So yeah. like, I randomized all the Pokemon's types, all their stats, uh, all the moves, all the types of the moves. Uh, so right now, I'm using a Nidoran, who is a Bug type. He has access to Leech Life, which is a Rock type move, and 
uh, pin missile, which is a bug type move. That sounds like a lot of sh- crazy <laughs> shit happening. It's fun. <laughs> I'm lo- I'm loving it. Good. Uh, good. It's and uh, like I, I can't wait to to do it, and I kind of want to do it on the show. Oh yeah, do, like a Nuzlocke, like totally random. I will watch you do that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm done with Pokemon. I, it's fair. I've discovered through our Pokemon playthrough that I just <laughs> just don't. I'm, like I don't it. even. I'm not even willing to give it. I just don't like it. I just. Okay. I can't stand Pokemon. All right, for whatever reason, but I. All right. <laughs> mm-hmm. I and uh, this this is the week where Sonic Mania came out, so I've been playing yeah. a lot of that. And and uh, Jacob has some some. We have you opinions. You know that thing where Surprise. Jacob does that thing where he hates everything? <laughs> we uh, have opinions. I do not hate everything. Yeah, you, do. you You talk like I hate everything, but you hate a lot of shit more than me. Yeah, it's just It's mine. just the concept of our show is that we play games we hate, and so far most of those games have been games I hate. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's also it's also a lot of a lot of uh you hate a lot more video games than I do. I guess I'm just uh, more critical of video games cuz I like I don't hate Sonic. I just I'm critical of it, again, like, and going into Assassin's Creed. I'm critical of Assassin's Creed because I want it to succeed. I want, you know, I want game designers to take a look at their games and make good choices. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that if you're blowing smoke up their ass for all the little shit that they get right. Well, I I, I actually thought about your opinions on Sonic while we were playing playing. Sonic Mania uh, about how you say that going fast in a game doesn't work. Uh, And I have... Some additional thoughts, and we will get okay. to that in our yeah, upcoming we'll, we'll get Sonic Mania playthrough. Uh, or up is it? Is it, it might be out. Who cares? If it's, it, it'll whatever. be out. There, yeah. there'll be two episodes out. Okay, so <laughs> so you know our opinions on Sonic Mania already, and yeah. and so yeah, I've been playing a lot of that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been continuing my playthrough of the Castlevania series. Oh, I recently yeah? beat Symphony of the Night for the second time, and Symphony of the Night is my favorite game of all time. Cool. Uh, cool. And I played through Harmony of Dissonance for the GBA, and it was pretty good. Not as good as. Symphony, sure. And I played Lament of, or I started playing. I'm halfway through Lament of Innocence for PS2, which is great podcast game where you just tune out and you just play <laughs> a game. And if and if you don't have a podcast going, I I would assume that it's terrible. Yeah, so, I don't. Yeah, I don't have enough of those games anymore. Yeah, like, uh, I <laughs> my favorite podcast games I've played have been Knack on Hard Difficulties. Yeah. Uh, uh, all Castlevania games work. Yeah. Uh, all of the Assassin's Creed games worked a lot. Sure. Oh, yeah, those are great. Basically, any game where you just run around and there's not much dialogue. Yeah. I uh, I loved to play MMOs. As that games like that would make sense. Because yeah. it's like, it's the perfect, you're doing mindless tasks that you need to get done. And then mm-hmm. every once in a while, like, you can shut the podcast off and do something important. Exactly. That's, that's, that's kind of my vibe yeah. with most games I play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't play MMOs anymore because, one, they're becoming bullshit. And two, I don't have the time. I don't. I don't have, like... 20 hours a week to mm-hmm. devote to yeah. playing a game. <laughs> I wish I ever had that time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything else you've done this week? There was there was something. I was thinking, like, oh, I'll talk about this on the podcast. I have, I can't remember. You suck it. your first dick? No. It wasn't that. You suck your second dick? <laughs> no. Did I you suck can, my can, first dick? <laughs> did you? <laughs> did you suck your first dick? No, I did not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. So <laughs> let's let's go into the, like the meat yeah let's of hit what the topic because because we normally do like 10, 15 minutes of catching up but a there's not much to catch up on there's not B, much to catch there's up a lot on. to talk about and we want to finish this that's true the week. last podcast went on really long and this this next game is going to be beefy because I know Jacob and I have a we, lot of thoughts about this, it. this is where our opinions begin to differ yes about where the Assassin's Creed uh, franchise goes well I, well I I feel like you're gonna think of some similarities uh, the more yeah. than you think yeah yeah but um. The next game in the series is Assassin's Creed 3, the most divisive of the franchise. <laughs> uh, divisive? I, I think most people just dislike it, don't they? I, I thought that was the general vibe. I, I have a, a I know a general uh, a group of people that, that think it's pretty good. Really? Yeah. Okay. I've never met anyone who liked that game. Uh, it, talk to normies. Normies uh, fucking normies. love Assassin's Creed 3. Really? Yeah, they fucking love huh. that shit. That's weird. Um, because it has to do with America. I mean, <laughs> normies are patriotic. Because you see so. George Washington. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it, it I takes guess. place in colonial America. They're like, oh, the revolution. And I mean, I also was like, oh, the revolution, because that's my favorite period in all of history. I think it's interesting as fuck. It, it's interesting. They do it in a profoundly boring way, though. I agree. <laughs> Absolutely agree. So, yeah, I, I was I But was I also I also think I like plots that, yeah. um, that they take um, – a setting, a historical setting, mm-hmm. and use it in the background. So, okay. 
So I actually do like that about Assassin's Creed 3. I, I like those parts too. I, what, I, what I would say, what I would add to that is the worst parts of the story are when it's not that. When it's like you're there and, and like assassin shit causes the Boston Massacre. Yeah, that's like, stupid. That's stupid shit. The stupidest shit about Assassin's Creed 3 uh, is that is the American Revolution. Yeah. Yeah, everything else around it, <laughs> the story-wise, is, is pretty good, yeah, in my opinion. I, I mean, it's okay. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the main character. Um, I like him. Do you? Mm-hmm. Uh, they, the Assassin's Creed team seems to fucking have a hard-on for him. Because, like, yeah, 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 they yeah. even, in 4, they're even like, oh, yeah, our players didn't understand how cool he was. Like, they have a little Easter egg for that shit. And I'm like, you're so fucking full of yourselves. He's just not. Wait, what's the Easter egg? The Easter egg is one of one of the hacks uh, in in four was just th- they mention how uh, he he wasn't popular among the Abstergo people, and it's like it's like yeah, <laughs> that's funny. It's funny, but at the same time, I'm like, get your head out of your ass. People didn't like him because he wasn't a great character. Okay, so so if you're if you're coming back from from last week and you, and you yeah. don't remember so much, this is the game immediately following the exit of Ezio from the franchise, right, who is who was the flagship character. Uh, everyone loved him. He had a yeah. great character arc. He's great. Uh, I mean, you, you you followed him from the you you controlled pushing him out of the womb to the yeah. day he died. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, pretty much. You're very so attached to the character. Yeah. And so this next game, you start playing as Hatham Kenway yeah. right at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and you you go through a small introductory sequence where you assassinate some dude, mm. and you do a fun fun, and then you. You go to America and you meet Ben Franklin, and Ben Ben Franklin's like, "I fuck women," <laughs> and that's kind of the joke because he just talks about doing kinky shit. Yeah, because that's that's kind of funny. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. It's funny. I mean, it's like it's not relevant or anything. No, no, it's it's, cute, it's not. It's cute. It's not the same as like Da Vinci, who like used his skills that he historically had to help out the character. Oh it's yeah, it's just no. like it's just like oh Benjamin Franklin fucked women. It's like yeah, it's that's, funny. It's that's not, yeah. true. That's not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> that's. Yeah, <laughs> and then so you do a couple of missions as as, as Haytham, and you and you're having some fun, and Desmond's whatever. You know, this is the part where the where the mm-hmm. present day storyline kind of oh, gets put man. to the it wayside, gets, or yeah. not in this game. It's not really in the wayside, and it's it's, it's kind of the culmination of it. They're trying to wrap it up because mm-hmm. I think that I think they felt it was getting in the way. Yeah, and I, I get and it that was what I think it was. Oh yeah, it, it kind of was, but at the same time, uh, in, in like the Ezio period, that's kind of I liked that a lot. I liked mm-hmm. knowing that there was still plot going in the background. Yeah, of course, of course. And there still is plot going in the background. Yeah, yeah. But to get it nowadays, you have to read the comics. You have yeah. to You have to see the movie. You right. have to, to read a it's book. It's all in the manual. There's, just... there's a book series that's out now that I even, haven't even touched. Yeah. Because uh, it's it's like young adult, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> is it? That's the yeah. going for but, the young but adult. The the rumor the rumor that's happening is in Origins because in the past few games they've been teasing. Okay, I'm just gonna spoil the end of Assassin's <laughs> Creed Three right now. Sure. Desmond dies. <gasps> <laughs> he has to make <laughs> the decision to either uh, destroy the world like immediately. Yeah. Like just end it, end it all, or. Uh, set loose something that will eventually take over the world. Yeah. So he decides, uh, and, and he dies if he chooses the one that lets the thing free. Yeah. So he's like, fuck it. We're going to, we're, I'm going to die. And then you guys, you build a, a resistance to the, the big scary thing. And yeah. now we're four games later and, and nothing's fucking yeah, happened. And it should be noted that this game came out in 2012. Yeah. And that's why they did the whole end oh, of the yeah, world it was, shit. Yeah. It was a joke. And it's like to ruin the entire story of Assassin's Creed for a fucking 2012 joke. I I, I got really mad. I don't mad. think it was a 2012 joke. I think it was just a, the <sighs> we are tying in to the events that we believe might happen in 2012. <laughs> like like I, I I think it made sense. I Whatever. I don't think it made. Sense. I, I I I thought it was I thought it was kind of stupid. It's kind of stupid, but I mean, there there's a. Like the whole thing about Assassin's Creed is taking mysteries from history, and right. kind of being like, "Why did they say the world was going to end in 2012?" And that's that's their explanation why. I don't think it's a joke. I think it's it's kind. I mean, I I say joke. It's really just kind of like a, a reference to like, oh, remember all the 2012 bullshit that was going on? Well, this is what really happened, mm-hmm. and it's. I mean, that's kind of what Assassin's Creed is, though. Uh, kind of, but it's it. There's a difference between historical fiction and using using the the myths and shit that 
I, in 2017, people don't even think about the the whole 2012 end of the world shit anymore. Oh yeah, it's, it's so like when you look back at that game, it ages it heavily. That's fair. I, I'm not looking at it from the perspective of someone who, what who, like I'm going back and looking at it from the perspective of someone who lived through the whole 2012 scare. Right, I, but the legacy yeah. of Assassin's Creed now has to live with exactly. this weight that's like just aging it more and more. Mm-hmm. I mean, also so, they could just be like fictional concept the world yeah. ends at this point like it, it i whatever who gives a fuck yeah like, it doesn't actually matter uh back to th- like back to the past back to the past or uh, the meat of the game happens yeah so you do a couple missions with hate them you, you storm a place you find mm. out how to use the n- game's new gun system where instead <laughs> of having uh having guns built into your hidden blade like you did in the past three games mm. you can now buy pick up a rifle you could pick up rifles or buy pistols yeah the rifles are are more accurate, but they have, like, one shot, and they take forever to reload. Right. Pistols you have on you at all times, and you can reload them while you run. Yeah, uh, but but the majority of the game, unlike actual history, the game really isn't changed by the addition of guns. Mm-hmm. Like, combat combat doesn't really change with guns. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, this, is, this is the game that kind of teases around doing a bunch of weird shit. Yeah, where, that's true. Where, <laughs> where the guns guns don't really work in combat, yeah. and and they don't really even work for stealth either. No, no. They pretty much work if you're just storming people from a distance, right? And they know you're coming. It, but like for <laughs> stealth, you just use a bow and arrow because it's silent. Of you, course, you, can't, you won't be spotted. Yeah. So and, and for combat, it's way more efficient to do the combos and shit that's already built into the game. Yes. So it's like it, the guns don't really have a place mm-hmm. in the design that currently existed. And speaking of combat, they over. Oversimplified combat. Oh god! To the point sure. where it's just fucking nothing. It's at so this boring. Point. It's it's, boring it's literally and just attack, counter, attack, counter, yeah. and then you kill, There's kill, nothing kill. Different. And it's boring as shit. And uh, you know, you have some cool weapons you can use, and and you, and you of, but it's not interesting. But, yeah, but most of the cool shit you have to do like you have to hunt animals from yeah. around America. And, like, and hunting America. animals in this game is. Not fun. No, because they, you just go into a forest and they're there forever, and it's whatever. Yeah, uh, and you you can set down lures, but it still takes too long. Right, and it's better for you to be just. I, actually, I'll get into this later because this sure. this comes into into uh, another part. Okay. Um. So you play a few, few missions as Hate Them. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, it's revealed that Hate Them is. A Templar! Oh, my He's God. He's a bad guy. Oh, my <laughs> God. And if you want to know more about why he is, please buy the book. No, and he's white. That's that's the reason. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Read the book. It, it, honestly, if you want to know if you want to know the story of Assassin's Creed 3 but don't want to play the shitty game, play uh, a <laughs> play or er, read read the book based on it because yeah. it's it's uh it follows Hatham from when he's a kid. And it's his story because, yeah. as it turns out, Assassin's Creed Three, the game, isn't really his story, no, and it switches not. perspective to his son. Yeah, which is super weird and jarring. Yeah, and just like, I don't know why, why they did that. It, it immediately. Yeah, either either cut the Hatham part or or cut uh, what's what's his name? His English name John Connor. Yeah, John Connor. No, John Connor is the guy from Terminator. His right. English name is Connor. Oh, his English name is Connor. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't remember. I yeah, Connor uh, is is a, a Native American boy who is the son of Hatham. Yeah, he 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 had a torrid love affair with a woman in a Native American uh, uh, colony tribe, tribe yeah. that he that he he stumbled into, and they had kind of a thing, and then they they boned it and whatever, and they had a kid. <laughs> who cares? Yeah. Um. And so now, then, you start as Connor as a kid uh, mm-hmm. after a real-life segment. Yeah. Uh, and, and Connor as a kid is just shitty compared to Hatham. So you have to play through, like, three hours of, of just all your right. abilities taken away, which I right. hate that. Yeah, it's so dumb. Um, but then, as, as Connor matures, because it's all about his story, you know, uh, Hatham comes back and burns his tribe to the ground, and mm-hmm. he's a sad, sad boy about it, and yeah. he has to go search for revenge to go kill his... The his man daddy. he doesn't know that is his father. Oh yeah. no, 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 no! His father doesn't burn it to the ground. It's Charles Lee who is the actual villain of the game. Uh, but Hatham's kind of the villain of the game. I mean, the final fights the, the, with Hatham. No, the oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's yeah. You're right. So I mean, like H- and, Hatham and Charles 
they, they, yeah, they, they really built up Haytham as like the arc villain though, because like the next three games are really about Haytham being the bad guy. Um, I highly disagree. <laughs> what why? the hell? That's not about? right at all. Yeah, it's totally right. The The second story is about uh, Haytham's father. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with Haytham. He's it just an Easter do... egg at the end of the game. No, no, no. It has to do with why he, the stuff that his father did and why he thinks that his father, who's an assassin, is evil and what turns him into a Templar. The no, third that's game, the book. The... But I'm saying as a series, the same way that that the overarching plot of like Star Wars is about Darth Vader. The overarching plot of these next three games is about Haytham as a villain. I really don't think so. I because the book the book shows it, that it's he doesn't care about his dad as an assassin. He barely I'm even only knows looking about at it. the games. I'm not well, yeah, looking well, at that's, the extended that's, universe. That's kind. Of, that's, well, that's it's still canon. It, it, the game Assassin's Creed Four has nothing to do with. It's a prequel about Haytham's dad, but it has nothing to do. With Hatham's with Hatham not in, general. in it, but that doesn't mean he it has nothing to do with. He's it. in the last cutscene. He's in the last cutscene, but he's not in the game portion of it. But yeah. that doesn't mean that it's not about him. It doesn't I, mean that it's not about his past. I about disagree. That whole family line. I mean, that's your that's that's your interpretation of the story, I, and I, I guess, disagree. But but I think that it's real easy to see that. I mean, Hatham it's easy is, to see. Hatham that. is connected to the next three games. It's that's well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doubted. I, I believe it's the story of the Hath- or, or, uh, of of the Kenway line. Uh, you can look at it that way too, but, but Hatham's uh, uh, in, in. He's he's really he's mar like they built him up as the villain of yeah, all of that. But Hatham's origin has nothing to do with Edward. That's just that's just how it uh, is. I, I think I think Edward has to do with Hatham, and, and I think if you look at it that way, that four can really be seen as like a prequel to. Th- I mean, four is a prequel to three. Yes, and it can be seen as as understanding why. Because because Captain Kenway is kind of a shitty person, it can be if you just heard stories about what happened to him, it would be easy to see why his son thinks that he's such a piece of shit and why assassins are a piece of shit and what turns Hatham into a villain. Yes, I see that, but I don't think the overarching plot is about him. I'd say that Assassin's Creed Rogue is more of a prequel to Assassin's Creed Three than Assassin's Creed Four is. Well, I just say that true. that they just follow the Americas and the Kenway line instead of. Instead of being directly a story about Haytham. I'm not saying it's directly a story about Haytham. I'm saying the overarching, like, it, it paints a picture of what Haytham is for, and he's super important to the Americas and everything that happens to the to the Assassin's Creed Order and uh, and the um, the Templar Order. Yeah. Like, every, he's super important to, to what happens after that. So mm-hmm. I, I, I think that they were trying to build him up as a villain. I'm not saying they succeeded. Mm-hmm. Well, but I... I believe that Haytham, as a villain, is a fantastic character. Yeah, uh, yeah following I agree with that. him, uh, and 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 Assassin's Creed Three has this overall theme of fatherhood uh, that is that is put forth through the modern day segments, and it's not really well done in the modern day segments no, at it's all. Not. But uh, in in the past segments, I think it's fantastic because well. uh, as as Connor grows into more and more of an assassin, uh, he meets up with his father, and his father's like shit because he runs into him <laughs> he's in an assassin's outfit yeah. and he's hunting his friend yeah and Hatham's like oh fuck dude yeah this is this isn't what i planned <laughs> uh and and it kind of sets forth this this time period where even though they are on different sides they start to form a relationship uh as as not only father and son but as friends uh despite being on opposite sides and it all culminates in the end when Connor is fed up with with the 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 way that he sees Hatham as evil and and it leads to a big climactic showdown well, where I feel like the emotions are are there I, I do uh I I think that you know dealing with that's hard to say because the story does prop that up but Connor's character doesn't lend itself to emotions easily and and they they try and make him into this this stoic badass but then tell this really emotional story with him and it doesn't mm-hmm. always work and I so I, don't I think it think... takes away from the ending confrontation I don't think Connor's really a stoic badass though but let, let's talk he about Connor's abilities okay that that are different than Ezio's and the, and the things that that he brings to the table in his new game yeah so he is very proficient at hunting hunting is a big part of the game you trap you snare you <laughs> uh yeah. uh 
you don't use every bit of the buffalo, which I they kind of say that in dialogue. They're like, you know, like, like the whole Native American thing. Yeah. They, they kind of they say that they do that in the dialogue. He's like, like he goes on this big lesson. He's like, use every like uh, right. every bit. And then he does it really. He just kind of like whatever makes the gun. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, <laughs> he like he like he'll kill a squirrel. And it's like, cool, squirrel pelt. And then like leave the rest of it there. Exactly. And it's like, it's like, like it's like right. grinding in an MMO. It doesn't. It, you not just very get fun. no. You get one thing from each en- from enemy. It's not even a fight. You just kill something mm-hmm. <laughs> and you get something. And it's not really, it's not really better than like just running around and doing nothing. No, you just kind of you, you just go run around. Kind of run around and and it, honestly, I ignored hunting after a certain. Yeah, point. I, I like, did. Too. It, it didn't. It doesn't really have an effect on the gameplay except in the games broken economy system yeah because in assassin's creed 2 brotherhood and revelations the way that you gained economy and the way that you raised up your villa was or villa (laughs) i'm (laughs) italian uh is is by buying properties throughout various places in italy yeah and then those profits slowly flood back into your bank Mm -hmm. uh and it's and it's you don't make much at first, but the more properties that you buy, it slowly becomes more and more worth it. Yeah. Uh, and I thought it was fun going around and collecting all the places and then being loaded as shit at the end of the game and not really <laughs> having yeah. anything to spend the money on it. Right. It was, it was rewarding. Uh, yeah, I, I, I had fun doing it in two. As I as I tried to blast through the games, I stopped doing it in Brotherhood and Revelations. That's fair. Um, but, like, yeah. It, it, I stopped it's, in Revelations, too. Yeah, yeah it's mostly fun to, to build up your, your, your place and, you know, you have – and of course, you you get money from doing shit that you would do in games. So exactly, like you get money from killing people and from completing assassinations mm-hmm. and and fighting and stealing and like w- whatever assassins yeah. do. And you could be either stuck with the amount of shit cash that you have from your missions, or you could invest it. Yeah, and and that's and that's fun. Yeah, like it feels good. Yeah, like whereas, you would buy the shit you need, and then everything else just invest it. Exactly, it was like it was smart. Uh, whereas in three, <laughs> uh, they try and do the whole. We're in America. It's time to do trades. Yeah. And so you have to go Ugh. through this shitty trading system where you collect materials mm. like or you buy materials for cheap from other people, but the right. people are like really out of the way in, in weird places. Yeah. So it usually ends up with you going to the same fucking guy that sells the most <laughs> expensive materials or yeah. just hunting beavers or whatever. Yeah. And then going and selling them to the right place. And sometimes your your uh, cargo can get attacked. And yeah. a lot of the times the game glitches out, and then it's just, your cargo's gone forever. Yeah. So, so there's I, no. I I quit early on. <laughs> Same. Because <laughs> it's just it's it not wasn't fun. Worth it. it wasn't fun. fun. It was broken. You're it always really really low on cash. Yeah, and it didn't really help you all that much. There was it was a lot of work for little reward, really. <laughs> uh, I mean, the better swords and guns and shit were was nice, but you could get through the game without it. Exactly, because the game's easy. And yeah, all the games the are pretty super, easy. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, three more than most. <laughs> and they, they kind of ram the, the whole history cock in your face, like we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, Connor is at every event. Yeah. Like, and, and he not only is there. Like, I'd be fine if he was just there. there. But he is the most important player. <laughs> like, yeah, Paul he should Revere be a founding didn't. father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Revere was on the back of the horse that yeah. Connor was riding. Right, exactly. And Fucking I, and God damn it. It kind of makes me think. This might be the case with other like Assassin's Creed games in the past, but since it's America, we notice we it. We notice it a lot. And so it's like um, ugh. <laughs> well <laughs> and and other games have that problem too, really. I mean like uh e- even though I'm to to jump up to Syndicate, even though I'm not from England, I know more modern history uh, the more modern history becomes, the more I know about it. So, yeah. like, even people playing uh, three in England would still know who George goddamn Washington is. Yeah, of course. Like, well, yeah, so everyone that, knows the American Revolution. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's, like, worldwide knowledge. Yeah, so so if you try and insert the assassin into all of these really important events that most people know in the modern era, y- you're going to have people who are disillusioned a little yeah. bit. And with American developers, if you're making a game based on the American Revolution and your company is centered in America, you have to make a do a really good job yeah. To not make sure, like, to, to make sure that you don't make the British just, just one-sided evil. bad guys. Yeah. And, and they, they tried did. hard, uh, but it's like, 
like like they they tried with like all the interactions that you have with British people. Right. But then you find out well, that the Templars are with the British yeah. and they're the overarching bad guys of the story. Yeah. And it makes yeah. sense. It actually yeah. does make sense that the Templars have a stake in the American Revolution. Right, right. Because the Templars are all about power and control. But but the problem with the game is that the game needs like one centralized bad guy group for mm. you to go and hunt down because you're an assassin. So if you're on the American side, you kind of have to make uh, every single every single guard, every single um, random patrolman, every single soldier a British enemy, mm-hmm. and then that makes it okay to kill them, and then that just makes them the bad guy. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much character you give them. They're the evil people because you're killing them. Yeah. So it's just – it's kind of – it's kind of one-sided mm-hmm. and broken in that I, way. I think in choosing a, a main historical villain for the game, mm. uh, in Charles Lee, that yeah. is a good idea. Yeah. F- fuck Charles Lee. No one, gives, <laughs> no one likes Charles Lee. Like, everyone in history thinks that Charles Lee is a fucking dickbag. Yeah. And uh, I find it funny because I, I replayed this game last year right after Hamilton was popular. <laughs> and they have that song where they just basically call Charles Lee a big old pussy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and, then, and then in the game... Uh, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and so everything's kind of wonky. And when you when you go up and you try and clear points on the on the map in this in, in Assassin's Creed Three, the the map doesn't really clear. Uh, it it kind of clears like a circle oh, around yeah. it. Yeah, I it, forgot so that. You you still have to Shit. run around and find things. So you can't ever have like one hundred percent map completion unless Ugh. you're fucking stupid. Yeah, <laughs> and so. It just, it just everything in this game is dialed back to make it less satisfying yeah. for the player. I, I think the biggest problem that 3 has is that it was trying way too hard to appeal to the entire general public. And then they also assumed that everyone was going to love it so much that there was so much that you could do in this game. So you'd obviously yeah. be playing it for 80 hours and like... They just didn't focus on making the game fun mm-hmm. instead of like adding shit. Yes, like errands to do. So okay, so let's let's do something where we're let's rate all of the Assassin's Creed games That's out of now. ten. Okay, uh, it, of, so far. can we do out of a hundred? Uh, yeah, I, let's do I, I out of like hundred. Okay, all right. So Assassin's Creed one. Uh, I would say uh, for the time. S- for the time, I would say seventy out of. 100. Uh, I would say sixty-five. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Assassin's Creed two. Uh, I would I would probably say eighty. Uh, I I was actually going to say the same, yeah. Sure, okay. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I would probably say 70. 50. About, really? Yeah, I hate that game. Okay. Uh, and then Revelations, I, I would say uh, 55. 60. Yeah. Uh, I like that one better I than really Brotherhood. I really hate that one. I really hate Brotherhood, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, I get it. That's fair. Uh, but, like, I understand why you hate Brotherhood, and you understand why I hate Revelations. Exactly, it's yeah, like, we It's understandable. It. Yeah. Um, and then 3, I would say... And, uh, but I think 3 has a great story and ending, whereas Jacob doesn't. No, I, I would say Assassin's Creed 3 is a 40 out of 100. I would give it a uh, 65. Really? Yes, I would. Really? That big? Yes. Wow. I... I think the gameplay is bunk, but I, I kind of love everything about it other, well, other than that. Really? I, the thing is, I, I, don't, I don't find Connor an interesting character. Mm-hmm. And, and I actually find him kind of like, you know when in comics they'll, they'll, have like, uh, they'll have like a character who's like, I don't know, Eskimo, and then his powers will be ice because he's an Eskimo. Yeah, okay. Right? That's what Connor is to me. He's... he's because he's Native American, he's good at tracking, he's good at hunting, you know, he, he's stoic. I mean, every single Native American trope is fucking forced on him. And it, it makes the character boring and a little bit offensive. I don't think he's that bad as, as I some people do. I don't think he's offensive at all. I, I, I feel like, like, based on his character... Uh, and what's learned about him tracking and hunting is in his blood and, and, and DNA genetic DNA is kind of a a running thing. So tracking and finding is kind of what he is in general. uh, Plus what he learned as a child uh, hunting in in the forest that he grew up in. Uh, I I feel like it makes sense. uh, I feel like, I feel like they justify it plot wise. I'm not saying that they don't, Mm -hmm. but I'm saying that someone in a boardroom was like, okay, we have a native American character. What's he good at? He's good at hunting, he's good at tracking, he's good at, you know, dealing with animals. And the, and that's the shit that bugs me. Is like, 
yeah, you can justify it all you want from the from the plot perspective, but from conception, you made him into basically a, a Native American stereotype, and that's just not. Co- I mean, his fucking his fucking melee weapon is a tomahawk. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> I just, <laughs> like, there's there's just so much that they could have. They could have done so much more, but they didn't. I feel like calling him a, a stereotype is a little bit reaching. Uh, uh, yeah, that's true. I, I, I don't think that he's like, again, I don't think he's that offensive. There are people who, who really hate of, him well, for yeah, that there, reason. Well, yeah, there's people who find there's, anything There's people offensive. who find anything yeah, offensive. That's, yeah. But, like, yeah, I, I see where they're coming from, though. Yeah, I agree. There I agree. is an argument to be made. Uh, uh, I, I'm not 100% on the d- behind the scenes. Uh, but on the sure, I on mean, I don't know. Right before every game, they say this game is made out of people made made from groups of people who are multicultural, multi ethnic, and right. But they used to say that because they would deal with real historical religious things. I mean, you kill the Pope in the second game. That's fair. So, like, I mean, that they have to say that because they they were unapologetic in being like the Pope's not some holy good guy. He's the fucking villain of the piece. Yeah, they they took risks, but in three they just they don't. They're they're so obvious about it, uh, like just not giving a shit. Yes, as far as I can, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So like that's that's why I think I dislike the story a little bit more. Yeah, I I think I think that's kind of base base plotting. Uh, but I think the actual story mm. as it goes well, and, and I even like it's the plot. Okay. I, I like it. I like it. That's my opinion. I mean, sure, I'm entitled sure. to that. Yeah. And we need to move on. Yeah, we so. do. Well, so to to segue a little bit, three still includes what people loved about that game, everyone across the board, the ship combat I didn't system. like it. You didn't like it? I didn't like the ship combat in You were the first three. person I've met who didn't like I it I thought in it three. was boring as fuck. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because I think it's bullshit in 4, too. I like it in 4. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so in, in Assassin's Creed 3, there are what are mini games but actually <laughs> ended up being kind of the like, the test the mi- yeah. like we'll we'll see if you like this in this game and then yeah. if you like it we'll make a whole game out of it right so in in a Assassin's Creed 3 you have you have these little mini games where you drive around on a little boat and you shoot other boats and Not a little boat. You you, you, short ride you, around. Dry, you you pilot an actual galleon. Yeah, so like it's like a big old like, boat. Yeah. And then I was saying little but it's just, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I know, but that's confusing cuz there are little boats. That's fair. <laughs> you drive a big old boat and you and you you go around the the uh, around America, and you you shoot other boats, and you yeah. go and hunt some stuff, and you travel with the wind. It's, and have you ever played Sid Meier's Pirates? Uh, no, but I, I know about it. Yeah, it's exactly Sid Meier's Pirates. Okay, it's well, <laughs> I didn't like it in Assassin's Creed. Sure, 3. no, it's and terrible. that takes us immediately into Assassin's Creed Four, mm-hmm. which has my favorite like like the the American Revolution is my favorite setting for like like historical. Like I love studying it. I sure. think it's really interesting. Uh, Assassin's Creed 4 has my favorite setting for a video game that is woefully underused, which is the Golden Age of Pirates. <laughs> and you play as a fucking pirate uh, who, yeah. is, who is, ends up being, uh, well, doesn't end up, he, he's Hatham's dad. Yeah, from, so, from so he's, he's Connor's granddad yes. uh, on the paternal line. So yeah. it's, it's, and obviously yeah. they never meet. They never uh, meet. I mean, uh, why would they? Uh, Edward, Edward Kenway is assassinated when... When uh, when Hatham's just a little boy, yeah. So it's it doesn't really come into it. No. Um, but so so Hatham is this fucking piece of shit pirate. Yeah. Who just kind of like, he kills an assassin and steals his robes, and then he just kind of gets like falls into this huge thing, and he's just yeah. like, what the? He fuck? basically stumbles onto like the conspiracy of assassins versus Templars, and yeah. is like. This has nothing to do with me. <laughs> but he and slowly gets sucked in yeah. more and more. And I, I actually love his character. And I, I do, too. That, He's that's, great. That's He's why great. people love this game. And that's why this is my favorite game in the series. This is why this is a lot of people's favorite game yeah, in the series. Yeah, it's a lot of people's. Because, because Edward is, is such a... Well, they dropped the future stuff. Like, it's there, but it's not they, so big of a thing. <laughs> well, well, Desmond is dead. So yeah, Desmond's it, dead. You play as you. It's just from your perspective. And you work at Abstergo. And, and Abstergo is now taking this public. Yes. So and, and now you they're, can... They're a video game company. And yeah. they're, they're, they're a story company. Mm-hmm. And they're making VR experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so the, there's a spinoff game of Assassin's Creed 3, which we won't talk about because it's terrible. Freedom uh, Cry? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Liberation. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really bad. You do play as a woman, and that's cool, but she isn't really, like, her character isn't really well done. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. It's bad. It's, it's, that, that game is a zero. I yeah. hate that game. Sure. Uh, it's 
just everything about Assassin's Creed 3, but worse. Uh, <laughs> way, way worse. Which is hard to do. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but yeah. Everything endearing is gone. Uh, and so uh, they, they make that out as if that spinoff game mm-hmm. was their first video game that they've tried. And so now the <laughs> Assassin's Creed games in real life are coexisting with the Assassin's Creed games that exist within the fictional universe of Assassin's Creed. Yeah. So you play as an intern who's testing a new game. Mm-hmm. Um, no, or, 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 no, no. You're, uh, you're going through the memories of Edward Kenway. To use to, for a movie. To use for a pirate movie. Oh, that's it. Yeah. No, was it a pirate? Yeah, it was no, a movie. it was a pirate movie. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you are, you're, you're tasked with going through all of his memories mm. And getting rid of all the all the bad stuff, like like AKA yeah, the assassin stuff, the, the stuff where he he does shit to help America. <laughs> yeah, so, basically. So, but then you end up uh, getting involved with uh, Desmond's hacker friends, yeah. who hack the the system and let you see all the shit that right. actually happens. Right. Uh, quote unquote. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The. the um, so so. You know, the game starts and they're just like, oh, you're a rugged douchebag pirate and you go and you, you go and do some shit. And, and <laughs> I mean, you, they're not wrong. You told your wife, you told your wife that you were just going to go on a boat for a little while. Yeah, and then and instead then you get caught up as a pirate and then you get caught up. You do have a very addictive personality, Edward. And he, he's a good yeah. character. He's funny. He's, he is a he's good interesting. character. Uh, the thing. Yeah, he, he's interesting. The cast around him, for the most part, isn't. His, his yes. first mate is a fantastic character, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has his own game, and that's cool. Yeah, and he has his own game, which I haven't played yet. I actually Neither want to. Um, but then then everyone else around him is a piece of shit, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I, well, they're all, they're all <laughs> fuckbag pirates. They're all, well, they're all fuckbag. And there's bad. also, um, what's her name? Uh, the lady pirate. Who the lady pirate that they, he, he, she does not pass off as a guy. The first I, second I saw her, I was like, that's a girl. <laughs> and then they kept, me. and then like every time like he would come on screen, they're like, he's a rugged man. I'm like, that's a girl. And then they revealed it. And I was like, yeah, that's a girl. It's so obvious. Jacob, it did me the trick. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> did I, it really? Yeah. I, I thought he was just a, just a little, a young, <laughs> a, a young boy. Ah. Uh, I, I don't understand that. Well, because they tried to pass him off. They didn't say he's a rugged man. They try and pass him off as they, a boy pirate. Yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, A young boy pirate. I know. So it was just so, I don't know. I, I don't know how it tricked me. I was also studying for a role I got at the time, so sure. I was really listening I, to AIDS documentaries I'm not, instead. <laughs> I, I'm saying it was obvious to me, and that's kind of why I hated it and hated the character. Gotcha. I, I also really hate twists. I also ha- really hate when writers are like, they're never going to see this coming. And then they like try and trick you and be like, do you see this was this the entire time? And I'm like, you could have spent all that time writing a better plot, writing good story. Th- this mm-hmm. you, Instead of trying to trick me and, and make me feel like an idiot, you could do your job. <laughs> the overarching Assassin's Creed franchise has a problem with having a fuck ton of characters that they expect you to just care about. Yeah, yeah. And this game, this game does have a big issue with that. It does. But in the end, the the like the main like three characters the that actually th- have a, have a part in the story are yeah. interesting. I mean, so, I, I cared about Blackbeard again yeah. because I knew who he He's was, Blackbeard, and then yeah. they yeah they gave him ca- more characterization. Mm-hmm. I cared about uh, Kenway and uh, his first mate. I can't remember his name, mm-hmm. but yeah, um, those three are are good characters. My favorite part of the. Uh, of, of Assassin's Creed 4 is this one part where you, you go out of the simulation and, like, your boss, who's, like, this overly peppy lady, yeah. which is really funny. Yeah. Uh, your boss is just like, wow, we made it. We made a fun trailer based on uh, the, uh, <laughs> the the stuff that you've experienced. Yeah. And the trailer is just the opening uh, movie, right. like, like, the opening cinematic for the yeah, game. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. Yeah. And it's actually a really good opening cinematic. It's super well animated. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just Blackbeard telling a story about the dread pilot, uh, pirate Ed, Edward yeah. Kenway. And, so, and then it's Edward doing a bunch of crazy shit. I actually fun. really like a lot of this stuff. Like, I loved the puzzle minigames uh the hacking mini games for the outworld stuff. So did I. And finding all the little post-it notes and, and shit. Mm-hmm. That was fun. And it develops the modern story a lot, actually. Yeah, it does. Uh but that's the last time they do it yeah. well. <laughs> well, I mean they do it in, in Rogue. They but do that's, it in Rogue, but th- we'll I get think into they that. do it worse. Yeah. Uh but I want to get to the heart of why I don't like four. Yes. Because this is like everyone this is the game that everyone loves. Like most I love people this game. absolutely adore this game. The reason I don't is because the ship combat is okay, but that's what saves the game. Not they didn't fix any of the Assassin's Creed parts of the game. Uh, I disagree. It's basically three though. 
I it's disagree. basically three except with tiny islands, and then you have a lot of ship combat. I think the biggest issue with Assassin's Creed is when you're running around and it's a big, super, too open world, and like you, there's too much world and not enough content. I think by having it subsectioned into small islands, you negate that issue. And you have bigger cities, but they're still relatively small. So yeah. I, I like the fact that there is more to do. Uh, in the game, and and hunting is back, but it's better because instead uh, of how is it better? Uh, because it's not stupid. It's not like a mechanic at all this time. <laughs> Basically, you you see an uh, animal on the map, and then you shoot it with a gun. Because in the last game, if you shot it with a gun, you wouldn't get as much money for it. Yeah. Uh, so this game, you just shoot it with a gun, and then you skin it, and then it just gives you whatever. And but that wasn't my problem with it. My problem was that you still have to, if you're going for a certain item, you still have to go out and hunt for that thing. Mm-hmm. Well, it shows you on the map which and which uh, animals are where. Which this time. animals are where? But even so, I, I still think the idea of going out and hunting certain animals for materials to buy something is just a, a well, bullshit mechanic. you don't mechanic. buy it. You don't use them to buy anything in this game. No, no, no. I mean, like, because you're using the materials to unlock certain weapons and everything. Yeah. That's the same as buying it. It doesn't matter that you don't go to a store. It's it's the same mechanically that you buy certain things using different pieces of, of material. And... I don't know. I, I'm just not a fan of that. I think it's it's wastes time, and I think it's it's meant to elongate the amount of hours that you play the game without being that much fun. I mean, I hunted all the animals in like 30 minutes. It's not. It's not. It doesn't take it's, as long as Jacob's it, making out. I'm not saying that it takes. Taking one minute would still annoy me because because okay. it, it doesn't matter how long it is if you're doing anything to elongate your your game. It's just not fun. It's something that's that's just bad design, in my opinion. Mm. Oh, I also want to want to backtrack to all the games for one second and just say sure. all of the games have wonderful music. Uh, yeah. I really like the music of all of them. The main theme of Assassin's Creed Four is probably my favorite. Uh, uh, it loads up in the menu and you just get this pirate ass theme song and it feels fucking sick as hell. <laughs> and then when you're dry, or when you're when you're uh, boating all around, your crew is singing these sea shanties that you can collect and you can collect more of them. But I it's do optional. love the shanties. And and you're but... just singing. It's like what what do you do? And you're like your whole crew is singing it and it feels <laughs> jaunty and it feels fun. But but the thing is, I, I you you say that you don't like big worlds without a whole lot of content, but that's one of my problems with four is that. It has the same problem that games like Wind Waker has, that games like Grand Theft Auto have. Like, the traveling is such a big part of it that you don't think of that as not having content, but it doesn't have content. The the islands are fun, but there's large areas that just don't have anything. I think the meta of Assassin's Creed 4's traveling is going around and collecting new shanties, and that way when you're boating around, it's comfy as fuck. (laughs) That's, I mean, <laughs> but that's not the part. Like that has nothing to do with being an assassin. That barely has anything to do with being the, a pirate. Who gives a fuck? I it's do. Fun. It's, I, it's I, comfy. You play an Assassin's Creed game to be an assassin. I mean, that's... basically, what Assassin's Creed Four does is it turns you into a pirate, and they have a real problem moving away from that going forward. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's it took the series back a lot because people were like, oh man, make more pirate games. And they're like, this game is about historical fiction and assassins. And they have a real problem reconciling that as, as they go forward into Rogue and Unity. Not uh, Unity, but Rogue, definitely. I, I think Unity, because they released at the same time and they were basically like, here's here's Rogue, here's the piratey part that you want, and we're just going to keep moving on with the assassins part to, to kind of reconcile why... Okay. Yeah. People okay. Like not. So, uh, I disagree. Uh, uh, I, sure. I yeah. I, I, li- I like uh, how comfy uh, driving around your ship is. I, <laughs> I like I like upgrading your ship because every every upgrade that you do feels meaningful. Uh, it, it uh, feels like it does something different, uh, or not different. It feels like it feels like you're growing more powerful as you amass more wealth and as you you lay true. siege on more on more ships and and true. It, but again, that entire part, the entire ship part, is directly ripped from Sid Meier's Pirates. Okay, I didn't and know it's, that. So. It's, it's fun because that game is, is decently fun. But, I mean, it, it, again, it's another problem with how I – they didn't change anything. It, it would be well, like – Sid Meier's Pirates came out in, like, what, 2003? 
Yeah. Well, this game came out in 2013, so it's pretty as shit, and so it's way better. <laughs> like, <laughs> pretty as shit does not make it a better game. I mean, if it's the exact same but prettier, then yes, it's better. Uh, no. No, not necessarily. Like, if just the ship combat is the exact same but it's prettier... Then no, no, no. Okay, so sorry. I should clarify why I'm saying no. Because Sid Meier's Pirates is a top-down game. So when, when you're doing the ship combat, you have access to all the information on the screen. You know exactly the angles that you're going. There's no crazy lock-on system that you have to do. Assassin's Creed 4 changes it to a third-person perspective for your boat. But that's and, and that might be more historically accurate, and it might be prettier, but it's not better game, game-wise, mechanically. Uh, okay. it, you have less information. There are times when you can't see the ship or where you're going. Uh, uh, waves are a giant problem other than just taking damage. Mm-hmm. It turns it from a, a board game that's competently designed to a 3D game that's not. Uh, like uh, A lot like how Sonic moving to 3D kind of disrupts its game design. Okay, I get that. that, that that's why I'm saying I, I don't mean to say you're right. Like When a game is, is just the same mechanically but then better graphics – yeah, that's, that's an upgrade. But, like, yeah, I, I forgot to mention that. I, I sometimes... Well, depending. I mean, it depends on the art style. It, but yeah, that's true. In a realistic art style, always. Um, uh. <laughs> so, so one thing that I believe that Assassin's Creed 4 fixes over all of the rest of the games is that it actually prioritizes stealth for the first time because there are mm. enemies in this game that'll fucking tank you. Are, I mean... Like, or that, that, no, that's they're, what they're I annoying was... to fight. That's what I was told, but I didn't have any... Because I I play all the Assassin's Creed to, to kind of test Assassin's Creed and to kind of, like, fuck with it. I play the game just by running through and killing as many people. I don't care if I get caught, and mm-hmm. I fight my way out. And I still did that for four, and it wasn't any harder. It's just annoying. It's less <laughs> it's, fun It's a to little fight bit people, annoying. Which, uh, so, like, there's certain enemies that, like... You have to go fucking trip them three times, and then you can stab them, and then you got to do that again. It takes like fucking three minutes that's to boring. fight one guy, and it's boring as shit. <laughs> and so, so in doing that, it's way more fun, and it's way prioritized to be stealthy. And they have they have items that that accentuate your stealth, like they have uh, the new blow dart system, which uh, either sets en- enemies to sleep, and if you uh, some, can put enemies to sleep while they're standing over some tall grass, enemy won't find or other enemies won't find them, and yeah. you won't be alerted. They have the berserk item, which mm-hmm. makes the uh, uh, the enemies just fucking go and just kill all the rest of the enemies, while you just run past them but, above, which feels really good. But and this this goes back to why I don't like Assassin's Creed. You can do all that, all of that you can do, and it is fun to do. Yeah. But it's still more efficient. I, I always found, like, I would always try and go in and be like, put this guy to sleep, berserk this guy, uh, shoot this guy with the bow and arrow. But then I would be like, at the end of the day, I would still get caught. And I found that it was just more efficient to just stab someone and walk away. Okay, just like good. every other game. No, I did. That was the dominant strategy. Stab someone and walk away was the better strategy than using all the fancy shit. And, and that's a real problem in design when it's more fun to put people to sleep, but it's not always as efficient. I disagree <laughs> okay because I, I, I feel like having to fight those big tank enemies that take forever removes that efficiency a- at least at least because uh, it makes you f- it makes you feel like you're physically going slower because you are not moving like even if you get caught and you die or whatever and you have to restart you're still moving uh but if, if you're I caught standing guess. in the same area you're just sitting in a static area fighting an enemy for like three minutes and then more enemies come and more tanks come and it's it's boring but but it is the dominant strategy. I mean, the, m- most of the time when I wasn't forced to do stealth, and this is another problem I have with the game, like when you, there are some sections where you, you're you forced to stealth and when you get caught, it, it's like, okay, game over, you lose, go start over again. Um, but but when, I do, when I'm not forced to do that, it's the dominant strategy for me to go like, fuck boys, I'm here, and then they all come at me and then I kill them really quickly one by one and I'm like, okay, this area is clear, I can go and do my objective. Uh, and even though they have the tank enemies, it was, it was, in my opinion, it was just the same thing as like countering, but it was like, it was just slower. It it wasn't really that, that different. I believe it, I was really good at the stealth, so I found it more efficient. (laughs) I was, I was good at the stealth too, but it just wasn't, it just wasn't, it wasn't the best strategy. If it's less fun, why do it? 
because like, it's the dominant strategy. The, yeah, the dominant strategy is uh, if if there's something that's fun for the players to do, they'll yeah. still do it because it's more efficient. Yeah. yeah, I think that's fucking stupid. What? And if you do that as a gamer, you're fucking, fucking stupid. No, you're, 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 you're limiting would, your fun. You can't. You can't. Because it's all about stupid. entertainment. It's all about entertainment. And I, I, that was, that, I was kidding. That, you're not actually stupid. <laughs> there but. are some gamers who have fun by completing goals. And if they're not having fun uh, in the process of completing that goal, then, then they're just bored overall. Then, in my opinion, those people are severely restricting themselves so you, from all So you're saying that, that people should role-play as an assassin even though it's well, not no. a, the better strategy. No, they should do whatever's most fun. But that's... I mean, That's think about an Assassin's being... Creed, or think, think about a Grand Theft Auto game. Yeah. Do more people j- play the story, or do more people just go around and hit people with cars? That's a sandbox game. That's a different situation. Is it? Yeah, it kind of is. It's a sandbox game. There's no, uh, yeah, it might not be the dominant strategy to, like, steal, like, get a bazooka, steal a cop car, and, like, run around the city as cops chase you, but you're not really doing anything else. There's no goal for you to complete in the first place. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Assassin's Creed, there is a goal, and to complete it, you have two paths. You have the stealth path and the combat path, and combat's way easier. The path of least resistance. I... I mean... I I, I see where that theory comes from. Yeah. I think it's a dumb theory. I don't don't think it's a... Like... I think that you should keep it in mind as you design games because there are players who are going to, whether or not uh, they find your game, like the process of your game fun, they're going to find the best way to solve a problem. Well, if you're goal-oriented as opposed to fun-oriented, I would recommend not playing Assassin's Creed because that's not the kind of game for you. Well, <laughs> yeah, and that's why a lot of gamers really hate those games. Exactly. I and that's mean, that's... But that's very subjective. But there's yeah, but there's still a way to to reconcile those two things. I mean, the stealth like like I mentioned Aragami uh, on the show uh, a while ago, and and that is a game that prioritizes stealth. If you get into combat, there's a way to get out of it, and there's a way to fight the guys. But you're it prioritizes stealth, and and stealth is fun, and so the dominant strategy is fun to do, and and so there's a way to to bring those two together. And Assassin's Creed just Seems to ignore that. Okay. Uh, which is why I get frustrated with the game series a lot. Uh, I am fun-oriented. I, I think... Are you, are you goal-oriented, <laughs> would you say? Uh, I'd say... Because I kind of get that vibe from you. Because whenever we talk about games, whenever we get into arguing about games, I'm always like, but it's fun to do this. And you're like, but it doesn't get you to the thing any faster. And I'm like, I don't care. That's it, kind of... It the- depends. I, I, I view it as a difference between, like, role-playing and... Like, because in tabletop gaming, there's, like, two types of players. Like, people who are, like, pretend to be in, in fantasy worlds and be like, I'm going to do this because it's what my character would do. And then there are people who would be like, I'm going to do this because it's what's statistically advantageous. And, yeah, I tend to lean a little bit more towards that. But I'm not, like, I still like to have fun. I still do fun things. It's just, from a game design perspective, you can fuse those two together. You can make the fun thing can. the the statistically right thing. But you don't have to do that to be a good I, I, game I think subjectively. You do. I, I think subjectively. You I didn't say objectively. I said subjectively. Subjectively. I mean, it's, and there's different a games for different folks. I mean, games like Overwatch are objective oriented, and I don't have fun playing them. Uh, yeah. Game, I mean, a lot of online shooters are. You know, I like. You know, this is gonna sound, make me sound like a huge like fucking Call of Duty ass piece of shit, <laughs> but games. Uh, first-person shooter games that have level-up systems yeah. that that are, that are balanced, obviously. Yeah. Uh, balanced level-up systems that make it fun and make it rewarding to continue to play are better than games, in my opinion, that have aesthetics that you level up for. So I can't get into games like Overwatch because I don't give a shit about aesthetics. Well, I disagree there from, from a, a game design perspective because uh, – Aesthetic upgrades make every player on the same level, and exactly. it's your purely yes, player I skill. I know, but but yeah, I, I mean, I get that. I, I understand why I the mean, Call you can of Duty get good level with up system anything. is fun. You can get good with, with with anything and be able to beat those high level players with anything, unless the game's uh, severely unbalanced. Yeah, and, and Call of Duty gonna, tends to be. Yeah, that I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm saying Call of Duty yeah, yeah. style. Like, I'm not like, talking about Call yeah, of Duty. I'm saying Call of Duty style level yeah, up yeah. systems in games where it's balanced. And I mean, even games that are kind of like League of Legends. 
Uh, the more you play, the more you can unlock more characters. Some characters mm-hmm. are better than others inherently. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Um, yeah, but but that's I don't know. That's still. <sighs> I, I mean, there's I, a lot. I, I think now that you brought up this whole role playing versus Ber- versus, versus strategic, yeah, yeah, I would say that I heavily go for more role playing, and, I, and I, I I believe. That's, and that's why fun. I have like, more fun in video games that you do. That's not true. I have tons of fun in you, video games. Yeah, but but you have you have to have very specific video games. Like I can play a shit game and just be like, ah, why we? <laughs> that's not true at all. Again, we brought this up in this podcast. I, <laughs> I we've played a lot of games on the show that I just despise. Mm-hmm. But there's a lot more games that I really love. I mean, we, we should fair. play Dark Souls, Borderlands Two. I actually we played play... Dark Souls this past week. I tried to get into it again. Yeah. It's so much I fun. I didn't like it. Yeah, I know you don't. And like, no, I don't. I don't dislike it. It's just not for me. Well, you've you've said that the your favorite part of it is like the online shit. Yeah, I, I like, like no, I like the on- online and the interconnected world, and I like the aesthetic. Yeah. I don't like the combat. The combat's fantastic. I know. I don't like it though. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, it's objectively good. Yeah, it's I'm well just designed. saying it's, it's you just don't like. I don't it. like it. Fine. Yeah, it's and that's that's opinion because it's not. Super. I mean, it's super strategic based, and it's super. You know, you go around, you do all these things, and I like games with strategic combat systems. But something about Dark Souls just it just doesn't capture me the way huh. it does for other people. I don't know what it is. We we should play it on. We should play two on the show. Yes. Because then I can be an angry little piece of shit at two, and you can <laughs> you can uh, see if you see if you like. I feel a like Dark that's Souls a bad game. idea. Why? Because I think that if we both play a game where we both think that it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, we'll, Sonic, <laughs> we'll just be no, 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 negative. I, no, because I like Dark the Dark Souls Two combat is still pretty good, okay. and I still like it. There's a lot of problems I I have with design and shit, um, but I think you'll like I think you'll like the design and everything. Okay, there, there, there's there, there's things I th- I think it would is make it pretty? good for a show. It's very pretty. Yeah, then it's that's way pretty much all I care one. about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's my favorite part about Dark Souls is the is the overall aesthetic. The aesthetic is fantastic. Fuck, oh, dude. We're going to have to talk about... Ooh, okay, we're, we're not even done with the first three, are like the, the three America games. Uh, yeah, well, well let's, <laughs> let's, let's quickly, quickly talk about Rogue for five minutes because that's all it's going to need. Yeah. It's the exact same as, as uh, Black Flag, but in a different setting. They add some improvements, such like very minute, like nitpick improvements. Yeah. Like when you whistle, when you're sitting in bushes to attract <laughs> enemies, you can now you can see, see the range of your whistle, which I think is actually very improved. Like, like that's very good. It's a very, it's a smart decision, but, but it's, it's like, not, it it's, that's like the, one of the few exactly. things. <laughs> it, it barely changes anything. Yeah. Your ship does different weapon stuff. This time you play as a Templar, uh, who used to be an assassin. Uh, Jacob and I have different opinions on that, but we won't get into it. Yeah. Uh, we, I we like mentioned him. it in the first one. Exactly. I like it. You don't, uh, yeah. I, I think that, that Jacob made a good point by saying that, that, um, uh, they just kind of go and turn the, the, uh, assassins into, uh, oh, into straw men. Straw men. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that's a big issue, but I think if you just, if it, you look at it as a standalone, as a game, uh, it's, it's I think okay. it's interesting. That's it, it. That's. I think it's about as good as four. So if you like four, you like Rogue. And if you and if you really like some of the background characters of Assassin's Creed Three, which I do, yeah, uh, it has a lot of prologue to them. Yeah. Uh, and the direct finale of the game is the direct opening of Unity, of Unity, which came out on the same day of the same year, uh, which was kind of a big issue for development because both of them kind of feel like they're on crutches. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want to know what kind of shows and yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get it. If, into if that. you want to know what we think about unity, check out the next episode, please comment. Tell us what you think about Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Uh, I want to know. I want to know what you us. think. Uh, <laughs> we argue clearly like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, argue with Jacob. Agree with how much I I'm uh, playing. No, the, the devil's fuck you. advocate. And no, no, I'm totally no. playing the devil's advocate. In this. Yeah. You know yeah. I am. That's, that's true. Uh, so agree with me though. Cause <laughs> Come on. It's uh, Assassin's, Assassin's Creed. Creed fanboys jump in, say, <laughs> Robert's so right, Jacob's a bum hole. Actual gamers come in and, and tell me why I'm right. Uh, <laughs> Roleplay-based gamers versus <laughs> strategy gamers go in the comments, talk about why you like games. Yeah. Uh, talk about why you can't get into Overwatch and agree with me. Uh, agree with me, too, because I, like, I, <laughs> I can't get into it either. Oh, yeah, I forget that. <laughs> but, but you're way more into it than I am. I, I, I accept that it is a well-designed game. I agree. I well, do not have I do not have <laughs> overwhelming fun playing it. That's yep. <laughs> it's it's fun until yeah. you're like three matches it's in and it's stale. 
That's uh, that's my opinion. I play it for like a week every three months, and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, because it, there, because there's no changing. It's all no, the same. it's pretty changing. It, they keep adding characters. And, I know, and I know, but changing but different characters. And everything. Y- you know, you you change the characters. You play the update where they add the new characters or change the characters, <laughs> and then you play for a week, and you're like, kind oh of. yeah, this is the same. So I guess it has ways to bring you back in more and more and more. Yeah. Uh, it's just I don't find the base gameplay that fun. Doesn't matter. In my opinion. <laughs> See you on the next episode of Critic Cast. Yeah. Comment your opinion. Subscribe. subscribe. Check out our next episode of Assassin's Creed. See you guys. Uh, hopefully this performs better than the last one. Ah!